This is naval aviation. Its mission, to maintain maritime superiority for the United States. All naval aircraft contribute to this mission in one way or another, and they do so as part of an integrated fighting force, primarily in carrier air wings. These are the attack, fighter, anti-submarine warfare, airborne early warning, reconnaissance, and electronic warfare airplanes. In addition, and also as part of the team, are the patrol, helicopter, training, and fleet support aircraft. Each type is necessary to accomplish the full range of warfare envisioned by the Navy in the event of national emergency. It is early morning, the first cycle of air ops. Preparations have been going on since well before daybreak. While the flight crews brief and plan in their ready rooms, plane captains and maintenance crews go over their birds. Nothing is left to chance. Successful flight ops depend on the collective skills of many men, but ultimately it all comes down to this. The moment when man and machine are shot off the deck in one sudden burst of steam, from a dead stop to flight in the space of a few heartbeats. The F-14 Tomcat is unexcelled in providing maritime air superiority. Its performance in conjunction with the Phoenix missile is outstanding and its material readiness as an all-weather fighter continues to improve. The A-6 Intruder is a medium attack bomber capable of delivering ordnance on targets completely obscured by darkness or bad weather. The A-7 Corsair is a light attack strike bomber and close air support aircraft. This single engine jet uses an advanced digital computer for both weapons delivery and navigation. The EA-6B Prowler is a four-seat jet designed for tactical electronic warfare. The sophisticated complex systems of this plane can deny a potential enemy the use of his own radar or radio equipment. The S-3A Viking is the Navy's newest carrier-based anti-submarine aircraft. It carries torpedoes, sonobuoys, high-resolution radar, and infrared and magnetic anomaly detectors. This aircraft can provide roughly the same information that the larger land-based P-3 Orion obtains. Rounding out the balanced air wing on a typical carrier is the SH-3H Sea King. Used for anti-submarine warfare, search and rescue, transfer of cargo, and other assistance missions, this plane is airborne during all carrier flight ops. It is the first up and the last to return. All of the aircraft on board a carrier work together. The most dramatic example of this occurs at the time of a coordinated airstrike. During training periods, these may be made against land or ocean targets. 
Pilots are trained to knock out targets afloat or ashore and naval objectives at sea or in port. Modern carriers seldom operate alone at sea. Other ships in the carrier task group might include cruisers, destroyers, submarines, and any number of supply and support ships. Carriers use lots of food, aviation fuel, parts, and other consumables that need to be restocked on a regular basis. Most of this replenishment is done while the ship is underway. Despite their size, American carriers are tough and resistant. By engineering design, they are among the most survivable of ships. There are a wide variety of actions a carrier can take to prevent an attack from being achieved. If attacked, a multitude of systems on board prevent a carrier from being disabled. Today, American carriers are stationed in the Mediterranean and Western Pacific Oceans under long-standing international agreements. Being an island nation, the United States needs the strategy of maritime superiority if it is to remain a strong country. The sea lines of communication must stay open. And without maritime superiority, America could neither prevail in war nor protect its vital interests in peace. I think are great. Couldn't ask anything better than flying off of a ship. 